so in the last class we ended with uh, migvel right we had almost seen the slides except for uh, advantages so let us quickly go through what we have seen in the last class i mean the last part of the last class so we have seen tig welding earlier and this is the second part that is make welding right this is another kind of welding we'll also see in category that is inert gas type of welding right uh, as you can see make welding the full form is metal inert gas welding so in inert gas we have two types of welding one is metal inert gas that is mic welding and the other one is tig welding tig so that stands for tungsten inert gas welding. so we will also see the differences between the two right as we finish off mic welding right so we have seen that uh, as for tungsten inert gas welding tig welding it was having a non consumable electric right the direct store direct store was only responsible for generating the heat and we were supplying filler material uh differently like separately okay but here it is a process where a continuously fed metal electrode via right the electrode itself is now consumable in this case so that's the major difference and uh, it contacts the base metal it produces r the consumable heat is generated right this process is same just as tig welding and the welding is shielded by an inert gas right just as you had tig welding uh, i mean the inert gas was supplied to protect the area right shield the area so you have here also an inert gas being supplied right the difference is the here the electrode is consumed right so it gets consumed up as and it will be it will be supplied by a roller right uh, a wire those uh, that wire electrode wire is uh, wound up on a roller that roller will rotate and it will supply you uh, this feed metal basically your filler what we have seen uh, i mean as for what we know from the last uh, types of welding that we have discussed right so that was what we have seen the static diagram as you can see you had the wire uh, this wire spool is what we call or roller right which is supplying the filler material filler metal which will fill the gap right the uh, of the two between the two metals that we are we are trying to join right so you see That that is your electrode, right? And it is being consumed up as the heat is generated because of the arc. This electrode will melt, right? And it will be fed continuously, right? It will melt and fall on this base metal, thereby forming this web. So this continuously fed electrode by this wire spool, right? Uh, this is a maximized version of this uh, figure here, right? So and the shielding as as was supplied in tig welding is supplied right so that is uh, the overview of gas metal yes it is also called gas metal r12 as we as it is, is it written here right gas metal r12 as for tig welding it was called gas tungsten r12 so it is known by two names more commonly as mig welding right mig and tig okay components as we have discussed in the diagram right the power source as usual electrodes wire right they were the simply supplying for uh, uh, supplying that uh, feed metal shielding gas manually had been done right that is basically the torch and the ground clamps wire reel etc right we have seen these slides isn't it and we have seen what happens when that trigger is pulled if there is a trigger right when the welder pulls this trigger you have uh, the r is generated and the feed metal being fed continuously so what happens when that the trigger is pulled is is laid out here uh, the wire electrode begins to feed right as i said the wire electrode will be fed 
because of that roller when the when the trigger is pulled another thing what happens is the circuit becomes electrically hot because if that is not hot then that uh, filler metal which is being fed will not be melted right so that is what is happening and the closer look as we have seen in that diagram also right the electrode being consumed continuously because of the heat generated by the arc and the shielding gases surrounding the torch on the weld area basically protecting the weld from atmospheric gases so that it doesn't oxidize or there are no more reactions unwanted reactions right and the weld that we get is sound right without impurities or without porosity uh, etc right so we have seen all this right the basic uh, what do you call components and their functions being described briefly electrode as we have discussed arc this is how that arc is generated the close up of the arc right and that heat being generated melts the filler uh, metal well body right as it is melting you have that well body or well area right shielding gas as we have discussed in the pig welding right generally carbon dioxide argon or mixture of both shielding gas the reason we have discussed it is basically shielding it from the atmospheric gases in the oxygen nitrogen or water or moisture insufficient gas flow results in porosity right because it does not displaces the gases right it has to remove those gases so if there is not much flow insufficient gas flow then it will result in porosity right as it's common sense so or it could also lead to void and the flow of that gas is measured in cubic feet per hour right the units to measure the diameter is uh, i mean the units are cubic feet per hour excessive Uh, shielding gas coverage will gas will cause porosity, right? And turbulence, right? And because of that negative pressure gradient, it could even uh, draw the atmospheric air, basically creating vacuum if for that turbulence, right? Fluid mechanics in place. So even excessive shielding gas coverage is not the desired. It will also cause It will, it will also cause decreased penetration because of reduced well pool temperature, right? And so the welder lays a bead of molten metal, right? You see, you can see here how neat that is, right? Because of no impurities, as it is surrounded by the shielding gas, the cold well uh, is what uh, is being achieved, right? The cold welding. This is an example of an aluminum well. Done by this gas metal arc welding or MIG welding process, right? And it is slag free, as you can see, quite neat, right? Unlike your arc welding, this is the arc welding. You have that slag formed, and you have to remove that. Sometimes, if it is not removed, it leads to uh, causing stress concentration in the weld area, right? When the component is subjected to different loads. advantages so as for the advantages of mid the mig welding you have uh, the welding can be done in all positions right position is not a constraint here piston welding offers no problems when compared to other processes right it can be done over the overhead welding also can be done right not just uh, the welder is here right and he has to weld right this is the bottom uh, what do you call torch overhead is the welder has to hand uh, has to what do you call we will so He will hold the torch right like this. Here is our welder, right? And he has to weld like this. Overhead, 
right? Overhead position, just as uh, you have uh, the roof, right? So if the weld is over and above the head of the welder, it becomes a problem with other processes. As for Ming, it can be in all positions. So that's a major advantage that we get with Ming welding, right? And uh, no skill factor required to prepare to operate Ming welding torch. So the learning curve, as you can see, is not much. Uh, what do you call it? I mean, it doesn't give much problem, right? Can be learned easily. Uh, the operation of that uh, welding torch to be able to operate that torch. High efficiency, right? In terms of what? In terms of higher welding speeds that you can achieve with this process in terms of greater deposition rates, right? The deposition of the filler metal and less post weld cleaning, right? Because there is no slag, right? Which you pop out from the weld. So all these things will lead to a higher efficiency, right? You are getting more welds in less time, right? Less non-productive time and able to achieve it faster because you are able to achieve higher welding speeds with this process. Deposition rates are high, right? You are able to fill more metal within less time, right? That's what it means, right? Rates, rate of deposition and cleaning is not required. So all these things will lead, uh, will help us to achieve a higher efficiency in this process. Process is easily automated, right? You can, you can automate this process uh, using robots or uh, any other type of uh, automated system. Uh, the process can be automated, right? Using programming. Uh, because there's not much, uh, I mean, if the welder is able to, there's something called manual, uh, manual walk programming, right? So basically, once the welder uh, does the welding, right? The robo is trying to learn the weld, uh, what the welder is doing. There's something called walk. I'm not able to remember the name properly. It's called walk of programming. Uh, okay. So basically what the welder is trying to do is he will switch on the uh, recording, what do you call the system of that robo. And now the robo is recording how the welder is performing the weld, right? Once he has performed the weld, right? All the intricate features or all the uh, turns that are required because of the geometry, right? The geometry would be complex, right? So he has to uh, perform that weld in, in, in that geometrical fashion. So now the, once, he, once the welder has completed the weld, right? Started from here and he has ended here. Right, all the way through like this. So once he, the welder has done it, right? Now that robo will learn how the welder has done it. So you are able to the robo that robo will will be able to perform this weld for any number of times, right? Once it has recorded how to do it for the first time, right? So. This is something there uh, in the automotive industries, right? To perform welds, for either spot welds or arc welds. So this process is there. So that is why we're saying this can be automated quite easily, right? Different methods, one of the processes that I explained, right? No fluxes are required in most cases here. No, because the flux is basically replaced with our shielding, yes, right? It's serving a, a similar purpose. Most of it losses were wasted man hour because by changing the electrode, right? You're not, able, you're not changing the electrode because the electrode is continuously repaired. And it will last for long. No doubt we have to change that uh, roller, right? The wire spool. But as compared to the arc welding electrodes that we have seen earlier, these are quite long, right? They will not uh, replenish that fast. So you have those productive factor, right? Non-productive time is now eliminated. Most of the losses are wasted by that caused by changing the electrodes, right? For shorter dur duration of times. So that's not there. High weld quality, right? Because it's an ultra low hydrogen process. The hydrogen 
a little bit if you have heard of is a process wherein i mean it is the uh, uh, is a process wherein the hydrogen gets deposited in the uh, weld or any other uh, heat treatment process right when when while we are doing the heat treatment process or the welding process the temperature is high hydrogen from the atmosphere gets inside or sits inside that material right when it is solidly formed that causes embrittlement basically it becomes brittle hard so that causes stress concentration etc right leads to uh, prior design failure right prior failure as compared to the design uh, requirements right so because this is an ultra low hydrogen process that uh, this gives us a higher weld quality right that is not possible for other welding types other non inert gas welding types may get take both are having inert gas as shielding right so that gives us this ultra low hydrogen uh, process capability is that clear okay so you see the these are advantages higher initial setup cost right the cost is high atmosphere surrounding the welding process has to be stable hence the shielding gases therefore this process is limited to drop free condition you see sorry drop free conditions so because the atmosphere is a factor right although you are providing shielding gas right it is limited to drop free conditions right so cross uh, condition uh, situations wherein you have uh, more of uh, winds or uh, something like that right you have a limitation right yeah, to be able to perform mig well high maintenance cost to extract no electronic components right in a sophisticated process so maintenance costs are high high because of the electronic component in one malfunction or any other random uh, electronic uh, malfunction etc leads to higher maintenance costs setting of plant variables requires a high skill level you see plant variables where to put this process and the speeds and everything to decide what type of uh, filler metal diameter of it the voltage setting all these are factors which are to be decided right beforehand right even selection of those equipment requires an engineer skilled engineer so setting of plant variables even requires a high skill less efficient when where high duty cycle requirements are necessary right if there are uh, uh, more of a current or voltage requirement right this is very less efficient right high duty in the sense uh, more thicker plates or more uh, voltage or power required right radiation effects are more severe right this is one important aspect to consider uh, for environmental reasons right so this comes off as a limitation that radiation radiation effects are severe in this kind of welding process Okay, so the first video. Before going to the video, if there are any doubts, you can ask. What can you get for rupees ninety nine today? Think. Well, a bottle of cold drink, a cup of coffee. In this exercise, you will learn about.
In this exercise, you will learn about the MIG welding process. The main equipments are required for MIG welding or AC or DC power supply, welding torch or gun, wire electrode, shielding gas cylinder, cooling system and remote current control. Welding gun utilizes a consumable electrode. The consumable electrode is fed from wire reel. The wire reel is operated by wire feed drive motor and it is controlled by wire feeder system. The welding gun is connected with cables to the power supply and with hearses to the shielding gas source and cooling system. When the power supply is switched on, power is transmitted from power source to control system. This control system allows the shielding gas to flow to the welding gun and make the wire feed drive motor to run. Meanwhile, the power supply heats the wire electrode when the electrode wire flow button is pressed in the welding gun. An arc is produced between the electrode and workpiece. The electrode in the torch and the base metal melt due to the heat developed by the arc. While the arc is produced, the inert or semi-inert gas passes through the holder and surrounds the electrode and the arc. The pressure of the shielding gas can be adjusted by gas regulator in the cylinder from 25 to 80 psi pounds per square inch. The flow can be measured by flow meter which has a manually operated needle wall which controls the organ flow from 10 to 60 SCFH standard cubic feet per hour. This protects the weld from the atmospheric gases such as nitrogen and oxygen so that oxidization in welded area is prevented. As a result of this shielding gas, a clean and precise weld is formed. Thus, the metals will be welded by melting the base metal and the wire electrode and depositing it into the weld portion. The high temperature generated in the electrode is reduced by passing water from the cooling system. Remote current control is used to change the welding current occasionally without going near the power source. This MIG welding is also called as semi-automatic arc welding and automatic arc welding is done by Rebo. Thus, you have learned about the MIG welding process. Right, there is another thing called cooling system, right? So, even this is part of some uh, MIG welding setups, right? To be able to control that uh, interface, right? Even cooling systems are installed as an auxiliary equipment. Doubts in this video. You see, the next type of welding is explosion welding. Okay, so as the name suggests, you are having, I mean, you are utilizing the explosion, uh, right? The explosive property to be able to join two different metals or materials. Okay, so it was developed relatively recently, decades after World War II. Right, this is kind of uh, what you call an uh, eccentric process. Okay, this is not mainstream, uh, not too utilized, right? Not so general. This process mostly is found to be applied to clad carbon steel with a corrosion resistant material. Examples are stainless steel, liquor alloy, titanium, zirconium, etc. Right, this is a solid state building process, right? Because you are not melting the uh, base metals. That's why it's called solid state welding process in which rapid coalescence, we have discussed this word, right? Coalescence, the joining of the uh, materials. Rapid coalescence of two, two metallic surfaces is caused by the energy of a detonated explosive, right? The energy of that explosive is what is responsible for having this coalescence of these two 
the direct service system. So the process is quite dangerous and uh, should be performed under some experts in specially designed chambers. Because we're utilizing exposure. So this is quite uh, a critical process that has to be uh, under the supervision of these experts and even in design chambers, right? For the safety of the workers and personnel, right? So you see here, detonation products, right? They are basically moving from here to there, right? So they are responsible for pushing this uh, material onto this base metal, right? So because of, you see here, because of that shock or the detonation, this can join with this base metal. So similarly, as it passes through the right, the right extreme right, then this part of this metal will also be deposited on this base metal because of the shock. That's how this explosive welding works. We'll see a video so that you can understand well, and then we'll discuss. Explosion welding. Explosive welding is a solid state welding process. It is largely used for cladding processes. Cladding is the process of joining two dissimilar metals together by extruding and pressing or rolling the two metals together under high pressure. It is one of the important methods used for joining the metals by the application of detonation of chemical explosives. There are few metals that are difficult to weld together. Hence this process is used to obtain good bonding strength between these metals, and this process of welding does not require a filler metal. Working Principle The working principle of this method is that, with the application of the controlled detonation of the chemical explosives on the welding surface, these explosion causes the weld plate to accelerate with very high velocity against the other metal, thus deforming the plate at the interface. This plastic deformation forms a metallurgical bond at the interface of the metals to be joined. The detonation lasts for a very short period of time, and thus it does not damage the metals. Explosion welding can produce... You see how it was earlier? Right? It was on top of that. Right? So it is supposed to move down. And therefore, this is able to join with this metal. And there is plastic deformation. That's key word to note here. Because of the plastic deformation, you are having this bond here, right? Interface of the metals to be joined. The detonation lasts for a very short period of time, and thus it does not damage the metals. Explosion welding can produce the bond between the metals which cannot be welded or bonded together with the application of the conventional welding processes. Right? So why explosion welding is because there are certain metals or materials which, which are not able to, which we are not able to join with the conventional uh, welding processes or other types that we have seen, right? Earlier, arc welding or inert gas type of welding, Right, all these welding times we are not able to join these metals because of their maybe properties, because of reaction, right, that may be happening at the higher temperatures like that. So, to weld those kind of metals and materials, we have to go for these kind of welding, which is seasonal. So, explosion welding is one type, right, of non conventional type, as I had said earlier, right? it's not general. Apart from these videos, we have other courses on our website which will boost your skills. The link is packed in a box structure and are placed, or held on the flyer plate, or on the buffer plate. The explosives can be TNT, that is, trinitrotoluene. 
RDX, that is, Research Department Explosive, or Royal Demolition Explosive. PTN, that is, Pentaerythrital, Tetranitrate. Flyer Plate, or Clad. The flyer plate is also referred to as clad. It is a metal that is going to be welded with the base plate. The flyer plate is placed at an angle or parallel to the base plate and it is lighter in density and has got low tensile yield strength than the base plate. Base plate. It is a stationary plate. Right. The reason this flyer plate is kept of uh, lesser strength is because it has to deform when that explosion happens. It has to deform, it has to take that energy and be able to right, uh, transfer that energy from the flyer plate to this blaze plate. So this is kept intentionally of lesser strength. This is able to yield more, basically take more energy, right? take more deformation. Which is called a base plate. It is backed by the backer plate, which supports the base plate during the explosion and prevents any distortion of the base plate. Buffer plate. Buffer plate is placed between the explosives and the flyer plate or clad. It prevents any damage inflicted by the explosives on the flyer plate and reduces the effect of the explosion on the surface of the flyer plate. So basically it acts as a cushion. The right? buffer acts as a cushion in uh, you know, not destroying this or damaging this uh, Flyer plate. So it tries to cushion the effect, stabilize that sudden energy that the explosion is given to this flyer plate. Right? So it acts as an intermediate link and buffers it or cushions it, cushions the effect of explosion. Right? Standoff distance. The distance or the gap between the flyer plate and the base plate is called the standoff distance and it plays a very important role in forming a weld. For a thin flyer plate, standoff distance is taken as double the thickness of the flyer plate. For thick flyer plate, the standoff distance is equal to the thickness of the flyer plate. Velocity of detonation. The rate of detonation of the explosive is commonly referred to as the velocity of detonation. It is directly proportional to the type of chemical explosive and its density. Normally the velocity of detonation is kept less than 120% of sonic velocity. Working. First, the surface to be welded together are cleaned and prepared. No rust or deformation should remain on the surface to produce a good weld quality. The base plate is then supported on the anvil to withstand the explosion and prevent distortion. Then the flyer plate is placed on the surface of the base plate by maintaining a standoff distance. The flyer plate can be held at an angle or parallel to the base plate, depending on the configuration of weld requirement. The buffer plate is placed. It's basically two types, right? Either it can be kept parallel or at an angle. Right? That, that is what we are going to see in the slides also. Or held over the flyer plate to protect the flyer plate from any damage or effect inflicted by the detonation of explosives. Then the prepared explosives are packed in a box-like structure, having the same size as the weld surface and there is a detonator that initiates the explosion, it is placed at one side of the explosive.